Chapter 32 With the mud and standing water, there was nothing more we could do in the tunnel that day. I suggested working on the garden beneath the warming sun, but after we got into the light and each saw how filthy each other was, we abandoned the idea of doing anything useful. We took a quick swim in the pond and let ourselves dry off somewhat before walking home, and we checked for Frau Eberhard around each corner before rounding it. I couldn't even imagine the noisy questions, I'm sorry, nosy questions she'd have for us tonight, especially if she noticed the cut on my arm. Despite our appearances, it was an uneventful walk home. The people who did see us used to, were used to us being dirty and understood that we were working a garden. So they barely seemed to notice we were dirtier than usual. But once we got inside our apartment, something was different. Fritz and Gerda Lowe, I want explanations. Mama had come home. My first thought was for the hidden microphones. Mama had been gone for a few weeks to a place where she didn't have to think about them. Hopefully she remembered that was always a concern here. Every word we said mattered, and the way we said it mattered just as much. My second thought was for what Mama must be thinking as she stared at Fritz and me. Nothing about us looked good. Beneath the layers of dirt, we were too thin, and our clothes were soiled and ragged. I had become deeply tanned, and my hands and knees were calloused. In only three weeks, we had gone from being respectful young people to looking more like workhouse orphans. Fritz smiled warmly, walked forward, and gave Mama a kiss on the cheek. I thought I saw him whisper into her ear what he when he did, but it was so quiet I couldn't be sure. I walked forward next and wanted more than anything to hug her, but she was so clean. I only reached up to kiss her, too. When I did, she grabbed my arm and saw the long cut from the rock. What? she started to ask. It's just a scratch, I told her, for the microphones. From a rambly weed. We've been gardening. It was supposed to be a surprise for you. Mama was surprised, all right. She pierced her lips together and told us both to get washed up. Fritz allowed me the first bath, and I took my time in it. Better here than anywhere near Mama's temper. When the water got cold enough to force me out, I could have sworn more dirt than water ran down the drain. When I got into the front room, I expected to see Fritz beside a fire, having written out explanations to Mama. Then everything would be better, but it was too warm outside to justify a fire without creating suspicion. Mama clearly knew we were up to something much bigger than gardening, yet we couldn't freely talk about any of it. While Fritz went to bathe, I asked Mama about Oma Gertrude. I figure that was safe enough. Oma is well enough to get around now, but she'll have a cast for several more weeks. She misses both of you and wondered why you didn't come with me. Where is all of our food? Mama had been poking around in the kitchen. There were some things, a cup of flour and a half a bottle of vinegar in the cupboards, some sausage grease in the refrigerator, and something far in the back of the refrigerator that neither Fritz nor I recognized. We haven't had time for the store, I said. Mama opened her mouth, closed it, and then marched over to the table, where she began unpacking a bag. Oma Gertrude insisted on sending me home with food. Some things are easier to buy out in the country, and she wanted me to bring them back to you. While I'm cooking, go to your room, Gerda, and get it cleaned up. You could probably garden in there with how dirty it is. Yes, Mama. Less than an hour later, warm, wonderful smells began coming from the kitchen sausage and potatoes and biscuits. Whatever Oma Gertrude had sent back with my mother, I loved them both all the more for it. Fritz and I didn't need to be called for supper. We were both in our places at the table when Mama served it. Food had never before tasted so good. I was sure of that. I ate greedily and remembered my manners, only when I caught a glimpse of Mama's disapproving stare. The two of you have turned to savages, she muttered. And someone had better tell me where all the sheets in this home have gone. Mama didn't sound terribly angry yet, but then she probably hadn't noticed the missing hinges on our coat closet door either. Fritz and I had a lot of explaining to do. We invited her for a walk around the neighborhood that night. We kept ourselves as far as possible from any of the crowds. Then our story started to unfold. 
We started with the picture of the welcome building Papa had sent to me. Mama said my father knew it well. During the war, it had been a clothing shop where his mother used to work. As I had suspected, he had sometimes hidden in the air raid shelter of the basement when the sirens went off. We need to tell you about that shelter, Fritz said. We started with the easier part first, about the garden on the surface and about the clothesline set up for me to do laundry in the pond. You'd wash my sheets in a dirty old pond? Mama had always prided herself on her white laundry. Gerda, that will ruin them. They are ruined now, Mama, all of them. I took a deep breath. We needed an excuse to be at the pond so we could dump the dirt. Dump what dirt? Fritz took her hand, and in that moment, I was glad that he was the older brother and that telling her was his responsibility more than mine. He leaned into her and very quietly said, the dirt from our tunnel beneath the wall. To her credit, Mama took the news better than we had expected. She didn't yell or faint, neither of which would have surprised me. But it took her a long time to start breathing again, and when she did, it was in loud, shallow gasps. She took, she shook her head in disbelief and let Fritz hold her shoulders to keep her calm. What have you done? She whispered. Oh, my children, why would you do this? As the reality of our con of our confession sank in, she pulled us into a quiet alleyway and faced each of us with horror in her eyes. I hated seeing that expression from my mother. It was one thing to see fear from Fritz or to feel it myself, but we had handled our fear and were managing our troubles as they came. To see so much worry from Mama was something else entirely. It meant that maybe everything wasn't as safe as we had led ourselves to believe. What will happen when that tunnel is found, she whispered. Because it will be. They always are. Well, we'll be gone by then, Fritz said. How do you know? You are working in the shadow of the wall. Do you think the guards aren't watching you? Aren't curious about what you're doing? A garden is a nice excuse, and maybe they'll ignore the laundry, but for how long? We hadn't told her about Officer Mueller, nor did we intend to. If she knew that one of the Grenzers had already discovered us, it would only strengthen her argument. Papa wanted us to dig, I said. Your father would never have asked this, Mama said. No matter how much he misses us, he would never put us at this much risk. But he did, I insisted. I saw him. Enough of this nonsense. Starting tomorrow, you will bury up that hole and all the tools with it. You will abandon the garden, and Fritz, you will find a respectable job until you join the military. I can't get a respectable job or any job, Fritz hissed, and I won't join the military. What's done is done. Our only choice now is to leave. What about Oma Gertrude? Who will take care of her? I felt awful for having forgotten about my grandmother. We couldn't leave her behind, of course, and with a broken leg, she couldn't make the walk through the uneven and narrow tunnel. I never understood the way your father thought, and I don't understand it in you two either. Mama was shaking her head again. We have a good life here. No, Mama, I said, we don't. So much of what we tolerate is just wrong. Even if nobody wants to think about it, we can't keep living this way. But at least we will live. It's what your father would have wanted. Don't talk about him as if he's dead. My words came out just as sharp as if I'd yelled them. I know what Papa wanted for all of us to come to the West with him that night. You said no. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have to build a tunnel and we'd be safe and all together. This is your fault. Gerda, that's enough. For a moment, Fritz's tone had sounded the way I remembered my father's voice and I thought about how disappointed Papa would be if he had heard me speak so rudely to my mother. I'm sorry, I whispered to her. That wasn't true. Some of it is, she said quietly. I'm sorry for that too, that I wasn't brave when I needed to be. Mama's face seemed to have aged years during our conversation in that alleyway. I felt older too, as if the things I spent so much time thinking about were light years away from what other girls my age were doing. I no longer cared about dolls or dresses or even smuggled Beatles records. What a silly rebellion that was compared to my actions now. Near treason in the eyes of the government? 
We'll take you to the tunnel tomorrow, I said. You'll see. Only if it's dried out by then, Fritz reminded me. I got a lot of water today. Ugh, you shouldn't have said that. Mama's back stiffened, and I knew she was picturing Fritz and me swimming for our lives. That hardly helped our cause. Let's go. Mama shook off a shiver that ran through the length of her. I feel too exposed out here. We're safer at home. But as we neared our, neared our apartment, I doubted that was true. Stasi vehicles were in front of our building with armed officers on the street. Mama instinctively got us behind her while Fritz and I looked at each other. My heart lurched into my throat. Were they there for us? Oma Gertrude gave me her car, Mama said cautiously. There's not much gas left, but we'll go as far as we can. I parked it in the lot behind us. You and Fritz go get inside the car and hide on the floor. I left the keys on the table upstairs. I'll come back for you soon. No, Mother. Fritz put a hand on her shoulder to guide her away with us. If they're here to arrest Gerda and me, then they'll arrest you too. Before we could act, a woman's scream caught our attention. Stasi officers were leading her outside in handcuffs. I immediately recognized her as the beautiful woman I had seen the night I stole the pulley. She was trying to fight the officers, but once she got onto the street and saw the crowd, she yelled, It's no crime to think or to speak or to be me. They were nearly the same words that had been on Herr Krause's handmade stamped papers. Even after being arrested, Herr Krause must have found another way to get his message out, maybe with small meetings in his apartment like those he used to hold with my father. Herr Krauss was brought out again, but this time his body was on a gurney and perfectly still. And since Stasi officers were carrying him out, I figured it was safe to assume his death wasn't an accident. Herr Krauss had received his punishment for daring to think and for getting others to think too. Sadness stabbed at my gut for how wrong this was. How unfair, yet I couldn't cry. I wanted to, but in that moment... Fear was overwhelming every other sense in me. Whatever crimes Herr Krauss had committed, it was safe to assume that Fritz and I had done far worse. If we couldn't get Mama to change her mind, soon we would face Herr Krauss's punishment too.